I'm Didi Hadachic, and you're watching 110 Football. Hey, everybody. We're excited to start the week off with another episode of Angels Wear Boots. That's right, my girls picked up another win over the weekend, and we cannot wait to break it down. We also have another episode from the Class of 22, and we can all relate to this week's topic. Plus, our very own Jen Munoz gives us her player ratings coming off Saturday's victory. Did I mention we won again this weekend? It literally never gets old. It sure doesn't. Angels Wear Boots starts now. Welcome to another episode of Angels Wear Boots. It was another three points for Angel City on Saturday, and here to break it down is former Mexican international Jen Munoz. Hey, Jen. Hey, guys. Happy Monday. Hi, Jen. Happy to be here. We've got the co-host of the Angel City Chicks podcast, Nina Kiefer. Hey, everybody. Happy to be back. Nina, happy early birthday. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's Nina's birthday on Thursday, so well wishes to her. And we have Angel City defender Sarah Gordon. Hello, everybody. All right, and make sure you're interacting with us in the chat. Put all of your questions in there, any comments, anything you agree with or disagree with. Hit it up in the chat, and we'll be sure to get to you. And make sure you like, subscribe, and hit the follow button. We've already got Amanda. Hi, Amanda. I know. Hi, Amanda. I miss you. <laughs> She's never dropped a patient off faster in an attempt to make it back to see us. We love Are you, Amanda. Are okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So let's start the show like we always do. It's time for hashtag trending. It's always more fun to do the show after a big win. Nina, it wasn't the prettiest game, but three points are three points. Absolutely. You know, I'll do anything to get a win, and I think that's the sentiment that our girls felt when they were out there on the pitch. It was, how are we going to take these points home? Let's be aggressive. You know, it doesn't have to be the most beautiful play, but let's put it together. And I feel like that's what they did. I completely agree, and I think... It is easy to say, you know, it was an own goal, blah, 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 but a win's a win, and let's look at the good moments. I mean, press without her hustle and without her grit, that own goal would not have happened, and I think the whole team as a collective really just worked their butts off. You got the goal and right yeah, look at that, wow. Oh my goodness, yeah, hustle, she stays hustle. with that the entire time after she goes to ground, getting it back up from the line, and I'm sorry, I look at that, and there's no one crashing the box. This is an own goal that shouldn't have been. This isn't a mistake. <laughs> Yeah, that guys, you can this, easily this, shake this, off. This is a rough own goal. <laughs> Defender, you are are feeling pretty terrible after this. But, I mean, it wasn't a pretty game. We said that. But it's a win is a win. I mean, That's we're second in the standings. We cannot and look at that dog pile. That was great. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that was yeah. iconic. You love that energy when you see them dog piling like that. But you know what? I wasn't too upset at the play. I felt like everyone pushed and pressured on the ball in all the right ways. I felt like we came out very aggressively. And then after that goal, we dialed it back and we settled in a little. So I don't mind that. I really do enjoy a very high pressure game. I enjoy when I see players really pushing each other. So yeah, and it was our first back-to-back -back win in history. So woo, iconic. Yeah, <laughs> love that. <laughs> Well, it may not have been the best game offensively, but Jen, what did you think of Didi Hayacic? Oh my God, phenomenal beast mode. I think that she really stepped up to the plate and I really think big players step up to big moments and that's exactly what she's doing. She is embracing pressure. She thrives off pressure. And personally, I think pressure is a privilege and I think being on this team, it's a lot of pressure being you know, in Los Angeles. And I think her and a lot of the girls really just step up and yeah, she player of the match, great game very much earned she set the tone early on in the ninth minute when she took that when we had the free kick and she couldn't even see the kick over the wall and she still manages to Can we see it, it the entire way and to Oof. get her hand to wow. that tipping that over the crossbar you see this <laughs> this is my favorite moment right i love here. her face the celebration <laughs> after and this is what i mean when it says you set the tone as the keeper when you make this save and everyone comes around you that's the moment that i think defines the rest of the game and how we were going to yeah, win. Yeah, I mean, exactly what you said. It set the tone. Soccer is a game of moments and momentum. And, like, as a defender, my goalie makes that save. Well, Didi is my goalie, so. <laughs> yeah. Makes that save. Like, I'm ready to have her back on the next play and do something big, too. I mean, that energy is special. And I feel like it's great to see Didi succeeding like this after a rough challenge cup, not just for her, but defensively the team, you know, letting in the amount of goals that were let in that's difficult as a goalie you feel that you know you you feel like it's not necessarily your fault but you feel like it is and what know? do you think was that mental change or that change in her that really made her you know step up to the plate 
compared you know, to the challenge? I, I don't know the specific moment, but I do remember talking to her and just like mentally, she wasn't feeling good about it, rightfully so. Um, and she wanted to, you know, work on her mental game and she's clearly done that. I mean, she stepped up in these big moments. Um, it was the ninth minute that save, but it set the tone for the entire game. And does that give you like adrenaline saying that? I mean, as a player, I mean, I remember when I was playing, I would see that or most of the times and I feel like that would give me so much energy to like go in harder in the next tackle or play that much harder for my teammate. Yeah, no, it's absolutely contagious. Um, I, I was up standing screaming. That's, that's what <laughs> oh, I want yeah. to see. That's Definitely. Yeah. And you know, we're seeing people in the chat agreeing with us. Like Didi is making that strong argument to keep that number one goalkeeper spot. And honestly, seeing her right now, I do think it's hers. I don't care who comes in. That's Didi's spot. I absolutely agree. Right now, that's Didi's spot. Of course. I think too, I mean, well, it's a little teaser, but Didi and I did have a conversation during media day about how she really prioritizes like her mental game before each she was walking me through her routine and maybe it was just taking some time for her to get comfortable, new stadium, new team. Like we always talk about and now we're teeing this up later, but expansion team and that pressure, so. Yeah. yeah. Now is that a mental thing or is that some goalkeeper superstition? Cause I've talked to a few keepers before and I know there's a lot of superstition when it comes to that spot, so. I feel like just overall what you were saying about a new team, I mean, I obviously was only in training for two weeks before I injured my knee, but it was hard for me too, being in a totally new city in a new environment. Um, playing with new women, it, it's difficult. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I don't think people understand how difficult it is to move your life across the country and get comfortable somewhere else. Cause you have to be comfortable to perform your best. Like you have to be in that groove in the moment to perform your best. I cannot agree with you more. I think being, I, when I went to Mexico, it took me so much time to get adjusted and it's your environment too. Environment is everything. And I think the mental game really affects your field or your field, your life on and off the field, which is huge. Yeah, I've never even thought about that. I couldn't even go away to college. Like I moved like, <laughs> like 40 miles down the road, commuted. Like I can't imagine having to leave my hometown. I don't yeah. know, <laughs> never thought of that. <laughs> At some point, I feel like it's part of the life, right? But it, I mean, they're all still human and it does affect them at the end of the day as well. Absolutely. Um, so I don't want to be a downer, but this was an undermanned current team and all we got was an own goal. Yes, Chris, Kristen deserved that goal, but should we be worried about the lack of finishing by this offense? Sarah, what do you think? Guys, I'm not playing into that. Should we be worried right now? <laughs> I, I already see in the chat, someone brought up Simone Charlie getting on the ball, making great runs, but not finishing. I thought Simone made some incredible runs and we, you know, talked about it was kind of the same run over, but she kept getting in behind um, Kansas City's line. She didn't finish, but she's been injured, you know? She's still getting into her flow that we keep talking about that we've seen Didi in now. Now we're waiting for Simone to, kind of to get into hers. Um, I feel like one of the hardest uh, parts about the attack is kind of getting into that groove and finding each other in the, in the right spots. And we have seen these attacking players do that. So I am not worried at all. Second in the standings, we're an expansion team. Like a few months ago, I think everyone was worried, like just yeah. waiting to get a win. So I don't think there's <laughs> anything to worry about. I mean, you want to peak at the right time and now is not the right time to peak. No, we're in a good place right now being second in the standings. We're in a very strong place, but I do think I have some concern with the fact that yes, it worked. She got down that right hand side so many fight. times. Simone, <laughs> ding ding. <laughs> Simone Charlie got down that right hand side so many times. She takes it all the way down to the goal line and cuts back in. It's a beautiful run. I think we saw it work three or four times throughout the match. But I need to also see something else because you're going to have whoever faces us two, three games down the road looking at that and going, ah, oh, Simone Charlie's thing is she's going to run it down the well, right hand side. Well, I think it, it would also be helpful to get some more players in the box off of her runs, mm -hmm. just because it's easy to defend one player, take yes. off the you know take off the goal for one player but if we see press in the box more in that or um june endo i know simone is fast as hell so it might be hard yeah. to keep up with her but you know it just brings some some Absolutely. different ideas i mean there. even with press's goal we saw no one else in the box with exactly. her at that point and i mean i'm just glad that we have these forwards that can take on three or four defenders on their own right. and yeah. make things happen that's well, a good spot to we be do in. keep you know like the defense has been solid we haven't let up a lot of goals and that might be one of the reasons it's difficult to get people in the box in these transitional moments. We're still working on our defensive and attacking transition. We yeah. can be really solid, especially going forward, but if we're always defending, it's gonna be like difficult 
to be there when we need to be. I yeah. Think. One of the things I really liked about this game was I felt like all of our forwards were also playing defense. I felt like we pressured the ball high into our attacking third in ways we hadn't done before. So I think Lauren Sesselman has said it before that defense wins games, and I threw it out there on our podcast. I think forwards who also play defense is what truly wins games because when we're all pressuring the ball like that, you know, you see a lot more happen, and I like it. Yeah. yeah, and I also think we can't forget about the midfield, or can't forget about the midfield. I think they're definitely like the core of the team. And I think with our midfield, they're so strong. And so I just think their chemistry is so on point too. And I think being that connecting force between the forwards and the defense really helped during this game and in the past games as well. But I kind of agree with you and I kind of agree with you too. Yes. <laughs> Of course you do. Charlie, I know, I know, right? <laughs> Let's do. Charlie can make some different runs, but I mean, it was working, so what more can you ask of her? But we'll see in the next game if, if it keeps working. <laughs> okay, well, so speaking of which, Clarice Lebahan continues to impress, and you brought it up, so you know a little something about the midfield. What do you think of her performance? I love her as a player. I think it definitely hits home because we have the same style of play. I think she has a lot of composure on and off the ball. Um, off the ball meaning, you know, her, not only her movement to receive the ball, but also her movement into space, or to create that space for her other teammates, which is so key. And you were saying, you're a defender, I'm not sure. That yeah, helps a lot. we were talking before the show, obviously, about off the ball movement and how important it is. I mean, you want your midfielders to be on the ball. Those are the players you want to get on the ball. So me as a defender, I'm a defender who likes to dribble and kind of break the first line of the attack. So, you know, dribble past the first forward in front of me. To have a midfielder who knows how to find the pockets off the ball, makes my life easier and makes it easy to connect an initial pass and kind of get moving forward. So off the ball as a midfielder and knowing, like reading the game and finding that space is so important. Yeah, definitely. And I think everything does come down to the midfield. That's where the attack is really going to be generated from and gain momentum. And I think throughout this game, we saw our midfield control the pace of the game. When we were attacking and when we were pressuring high, everyone was moving and going. And then as soon as we scored that goal, or as soon as Current scored that goal for us, um, <laughs> we saw Kerry Ricaro really slow the pace of the game down and try and take that control and keep the pace a little slower so we had a little more control of everything. Yeah, I think the DD save and, you know, Ricaro having that, you know, calmness on the ball and kind of, you know, like you said after the goal, she kind of took a step back and we kind of defended a little bit. It was it's so key and I think that's what wins games. That's what. No. Yeah, I was going to say, I think we're seeing the ref chat blow up in here. And I think that's something <laughs> we always end up touching on is, you know, I, I saw it a second ago, that yellow card to Simone Charlie. Like, can we just derail for a minute and dig into this? Because I was irate. Okay, it wouldn't be an NWSL game if we didn't have a <laughs> terrible call that we didn't were want irate about. Yeah, I could have refed. <laughs> At the refs. Yeah. At refs. But I feel like, okay, so yeah, I don't agree with the yellow card on Simone Charlie. And I'm a little upset with Elizabeth Ball because I backed her on Instagram once Ooh. or on Twitter when, when there was a terrible call on her. And now she's going to... Go I just can't. To my girl, the yeah. key. <laughs> so they're going. It's a 50-50 ball. Clearly, they're yeah. going at it together. And I'm sorry if you can't keep up with Simone Charlie. That's not Simone Charlie's fault. Exactly. As ball is diving down, it's that back heel hook of her legs, and that to me is where the foul occurs. Like that was a 50-50 ball until she goes to ground and she takes Simone Charlie out, and then Simone Charlie really to get quick. the yellow for descent. I'm yeah. just terrible. It's not okay, and I think we've said it before. The refereeing could. Could be better, I think, Needs in this to game. Be better. The commentary oh. also could have been a lot better. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're just throwing everyone under the bus today. <laughs> Basically, we need a clean day. sheet of everyone. <laughs> <laughs> really quick, though, before we move on, I do want to come back to the midfield really quick. Are you guys surprised by how quickly the unit has gelled? Do you feel like having someone like Carrie with her veteran presence has helped? Or is none of this a surprise to any of you? I think experience helps so much, and I think with Danny being the workhorse that she is and Sab being the technical queen that she is, it, they just so, mesh together so well, and they all have really different strengths and skills, which kind of make up that heart of Angel City. I think we've also seen it improve from the Challenge Cup mm -hmm. because I do remember the first few games kind of thinking, I want to see our sixes on the ball more. I want to see Danny Weatherhold on the ball more. I want to see Carrie want the ball more and not go backwards when they get it, and I do think we've seen that, and yeah. it has gelled more and looked better. Yeah, I mean, we're solid in the middle and that's what you look for to start everything. I think 
I like the chemistry that we're seeing. We're seeing players covering for each other a lot more, making those runs. And especially as players have shifted positions within the lineup, you know, having Jasmine Spencer and Tyler Lucy playing defense, <laughs> you know, we're seeing our midfield trade off a little more covering that back line as those girls press forward for their runs. And I've liked the transition. Yeah, and I think it's crazy to think how fast they've gelled together and I think as a player that's so hard coming into a new team new players it's so hard to get that chemistry but I think they've done a great job and it's only gonna get better from here we're only it's only the beginning yeah which is crazy. I, I love what I've seen from Savannah McCaskill mm -hmm. I feel like because she's oh, yeah. obviously jumped around to a bunch of different teams I'm a little biased I play with her in Chicago like we're good friends but I feel like she's really making a home for herself here because mm -hmm. she has been around the league a little bit she just she looks like, you know, she's a veteran now. She knows mm -hmm. what she's doing. She makes good runs off the ball. She plays good balls. And then she likes to go 1v1. Like, yeah. she's been fun to watch. She's, she's always, a dual winner. Yes. And she's I, always going for the ball. And she's always winning. Yeah. Like winning. <laughs> <laughs> and I think she's always just one step ahead. Like mentally, I too, I think as a midfield, she's always just one step ahead, you know, with her passes. I love her through ball passes. I think she's known for that. I love that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think she's a great player. And she's really meshed well with, with the team. Yeah. Well, we're going to get to your player rating soon so we can get more into that. But let's move on to another edition of Class of 22. So we've all been there before. It's a fun night out with friends. Beverages are flowing. And suddenly you have enough courage to put your name on the karaoke list. I mean, I don't. But we all have the go-to song. And this year's Angel City roster is no different. Let's check it out. I have a couple. Get Your Freak On by Missy Elliott, <laughs> or If I Was a Boy, Beyonce. <laughs> Hit Me Baby One More Time. <laughs> Take a Bow, Rihanna. Back in Blood. Ooh, I'm a, like a classic rock girl, so like the boys are back in town. The tequila one, where all you say is tequila. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> this is kind of embarrassing. All the words to Ice Ice Baby, so that could be kind of funny. Sweet Caroline, Neil Diamond. Probably like Bet On It, High School Musical. Man, I Feel Like a Woman by Shania Twain. Britney. Anything Britney Spears pre-2003. Britney, like when she's... Hit me, baby, one more time. Definitely would want to see Michael Jackson do the moonwalk live. That'd be amazing. Whatever you want me to sing, I will sing it. I have zero shame. I was expecting a little bit more Britney. Like, I don't know your teammates well, but I know them well enough to know that I'm surprised Allie's answer wasn't Britney. Carrie's doesn't surprise me. <laughs> There's just like too much Britney that goes on for me. I'm like, oh. Is that playing the locker room? Um, yeah, a little bit. Really? I don't know. Oh, Let's talk about Sarah's. Do you guys play the same songs in the locker room, or does everybody kind of like have their headphones in? I mean, there's like a playlist, and then there's also like a DJ. So it's oh, okay. Who's DJ? Um, Dee Dee. Oh, oh. Dee Dee is just like a woman of all trades. <laughs> Seriously. Jack of all trades. I love that. Yeah. So, what's your go-to karaoke song? Oh, I have a bunch. Um, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> This was my moment. Um, high School Musical, anything High School Musical. Um, <laughs> Justin Bieber, One Less Only Girl. Um, okay. And Britney, of course. Okay. Oh, and um, Drake. Okay. Okay. It's That's like very just throwing it all out there. So there's 500 songs. So <laughs> any song that I like. <laughs> Nina, what's yours? Uh, I'm the girl that's still hiding in the back um, with their phone out recording everybody, like fangirl first in the front row. That's... Yeah, no. You're avoiding okay. answer. I'm a, I <laughs> avoid karaoke at all costs. I feel like when the karaoke comes out, I'm like, time to go <laughs> nothing, home. Nothing would make you go do karaoke. Even on your birthday this week, yourself. you're not doing karaoke? I don't think so. I've been out so many times with like close friends, and they'll all go up. Like, JR will go up, Amanda will go up, and I'm the girl sitting in the back corner, like, no, have fun. I'll watch your drinks. I got we your just first. Need to get you a few shots of tequila, and then I feel yeah. like. Yeah, I'm with you. I don't do karaoke. All right, Megan. Megan. Megan? <laughs> no. What's your karaoke song? It's not safe for work. <laughs> mine, was, mine was not safe for work either. Back in blood. It's Lil Ooh, Wayne. I come can on. I can tell you every word to Amelie right now. Okay. <gasps> Amelie. I can too. No <laughs> way. Give us like the, if you like okay. my life depended on it. Oh my god. I like rap every song or like, you know. I got caught in the car doing that the other day with Christian and Amanda. I think they have a video. And I was like, oh, like how? And I'm like, I don't know. Just <laughs> See, you would do karaoke. Yeah. <laughs> No, 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 no video, no, no video. Send it in, send it in. Everyone in the chat is agreeing. Nina doesn't know pop culture. She loves hip hop. Yeah, that is true. I do love hip hop. That's amazing. Anything that you can like really dance to, I don't know. But yeah, you're not going to see me on karaoke. You so, anyways, <laughs> it is now. 
It is now time to break down how each <laughs> member of the Angel City roster performed. This week, we're tasking Jen Munoz with her player ratings. Jen, oh, the floor right. and iPad is yours. Here we go. go. Feel free to right. join in. You know. Well, we're going to go in. Oh, yeah. yeah. This is Wonderful. starting. <laughs> Sarah wishes she had popcorn. <laughs> okay, Feeling so feisty. we're going to start with the queen of the match, Dee Dee. I'm going to give her a 10 because she really just set the town amazing. I'm going to put a heart next to her name. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> um, and then we have Spencer. So a lot of my ratings are pretty high. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, I like the 10. I, I agree with the I 10 like the on heart. this one. I think Dee Dee okay. is queen of the match for sure. <laughs> okay. Now we have Spencer. I'm going to give her a seven just because I do feel like she got a lot of touches on the ball, but I felt like she could have done more with her accuracy and just mm -hmm. as a whole. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, I feel like Spencer's good and she's solid and she's a solid seven every single time we go out. I'd like to see her dial it up more. And I think maybe if we saw her in one of her more natural positions, we'd yes. see a lot more from her too. Of course, give her the benefit of the doubt. Okay, and then we have Reed. I'm gonna give her an 8.5 because I do feel like she's the backbone of the team. I mean, she's just a wall and I think that she really held her own in this game. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have Gil, Gil what? Gio. Gil. Gio. Okay, I'm gonna give her an 8.5. Um, so I think she just wants Gio to have a 10. <laughs> I'm sorry. Don't be sorry, <laughs> this is your segment. I think, is a 10, no actually, no. yeah, these are mine, not yours. So, <laughs> yes. Chubb 24. Back, or, yeah, anyways, Energy. on your business, yeah. So, okay, um, where did I leave off? Okay, Ricaro, I'm gonna give her an eight because I think, like we were talking about before, I think she really controlled the game and mm -hmm. she's also just freaking wall. Um, yeah, she's part of the no game. Sleeves FC crew with Tyler Lucy rolling her sleeves yeah. up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then we're gonna give a Sav an 8.5 because I, like I said before, she is the through pass queen and she's just a playmaker. A quick free kick queen. I mean, or, I you say that three. <laughs> <laughs> to get kicked out. <laughs> no, I think she's our go-to for a lot of set plays yeah. and she has power behind her ball, so I like it. Yeah. Great services. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I'm going to give Danny an 8.2 because I do she Pull has the work the too. <laughs> How do you get to a point yeah. 2? Good question. <laughs> Show your work, please. Um, okay. I think I, she's a workhorse. She's one of my favorite players on the field. I don't know. I do want to I want to see a goal. You I say this about everyone. I know. One of my favorite players. <laughs> I just love everyone. She's also um, our captain, right? Yeah. So That's where I the mean, point 2 came from. That's what the yeah, point 2 is exactly. Yeah. Oh, okay, I missed the metrics earlier. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then we're going to give Charlie an 8 just because you know, we were talking about the runs earlier. I feel like I do agree with both of you, like I said before, of course <laughs> I do, but I want to see something different from her. I want to see some, you know, maybe some runs up, like going in the inside, not just straight down the middle. But I also think with that comes, we need more people in the box as well. So yeah, so I yeah. I can I'm see just that. happy to see her out there and yeah. getting back into form. Of course, like, definitely. Yeah. We'll I go mean, with an eight. We'll I, I think she's got a lot that she's going to do. Like, yeah. I think she's somebody to watch for yeah, sure. Yeah, for sure. And okay, so I'm gonna give Endo a 7.5 with a smiley face because <laughs> I'm a big fan of her. I think she's amazing. I think she's gonna grow throughout this league or throughout the season. Um, but I did oh. wanna see more of her. She had a lot of great chances, but. Yeah, I think I would have given Endo a little higher just okay. personally. I think Endo is one of the players where I feel like she's so technically sound and her touch is incredible. I think she has probably one of the better touches on the pitch for our team. I think the only person who might be better than her is Kristen Press on the ball. Yes. And I think Endo still, she takes her moments. You know, she's always making plays and she's setting people up for success. But I think she sees her moments and chooses wisely when she's going to fire that shot off. Yeah, I so. agree with that. I, I do think she was... For what she's done, she was a little quiet, in the, especially in the first yes. half. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, and also you can't ignore the fact that when you have a forward, you want them to score. So yeah. I don't know, bump the defense all up by one point, take them away from every <laughs> forward. No. Plus <laughs> one. Okay. Um, okay, I'm gonna give Lucy, Lucy, Lucy. Um, a 7.5. Um, I know she. LAFC Beast is not agreeing with you. Yeah. Oh, Spencer deserves higher, in my opinion. I agree. LAFC I like your opinion. <laughs> but next. That is your opinion. That is your opinion. <laughs> Oh, great show, spread the word. Yes. <laughs> okay, so, All right, so Lucy with a 7.5. Is that a, do we get a defense and an offense rating for Lucy? Does she get like oh, a split well, yeah. credit? Like, I think as a defender, she gets an eight. Okay. There we there go. There we go, a little, <laughs> a little extra. Now we're doing math, okay. we got fractions. Um, okay, and then press, obviously, a nine. I think 
the hustle and the grit in her this game, I mean, that own goal wouldn't have happened without that extra push that she had. She mm -hmm. entered beast mode there. Um, yeah. But yeah. I think this is my favorite game that I've seen press in so far, which is, I think, a weird thing to say, but I felt like she came out with a lot more energy in this last match than I've seen for a while. And she was pushing up on the ball. She was really making herself known. She was doing Kristen press things and I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Okay, and then there's more. I think that's it. Say, do we get Freya a score? <laughs> yeah. Or, oh, okay. oh, are we rating what, what our are giving, subs? What are giving Freya? Subs, subs, subs. Um, I want you guys to help me out with this. With Freya? Yes. I give Freya a 10. Sarah has a 10? biased opinion. I give Freya an 11. <laughs> we'll, we'll give her, hey, her, her, her a 12. <laughs> Make sure that paycheck clears. <laughs> <laughs> Teacher's pet on set. <laughs> Um, yeah, okay. I don't know. I love Freya's tactics coming into the game. I think she's brilliant. I mean, they listed Lucy as a forward on here, and I think that's just to mess with everyone. And then they had her playing defense. Like, what are they trying but to do? Do you think Freya was like, hey, guys, when you do the graphics <laughs> Maybe. in the stadium before the game, can you please make sure that Tyler Lucy says forward? I don't know, because it looks like we're going to be playing four forwards. <laughs> and I kind of now want to see that, too. I don't know. But I think also just the way Freya has coached this team and set the tone and the culture and the fact that we've seen this team really grow and become second on the table, yeah. you know. No, I, I agree with you. I'd go for an 11. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. Freya has been <laughs> great. I mean, the team's already improving, like moving in the right direction. I don't think you can say anything bad about Freya at this point. Except she doesn't like cheese. I was gonna say, Freya, if you're <laughs> watching, you're getting closer to eating that block of cheese. Yup. Angel City wins the title. All right. Interesting. You didn't know about that? <laughs> no, I didn't. Oh, yeah. She doesn't like cheese. She's, she's afraid just, of like, cheese. She's afraid yeah. of it. She doesn't. She's afraid of cheese. Mess with it at all. This is your coach. Everything disgusts uh, wait, her. Wait, wait. Why would she eat a block of? Yeah, she said <laughs> that if you, if Angel City wins the title, she would eat a little bit of cheese, and that I guess is a really, it's a oh, big wow. deal. Oh wow. Right. So, so keep that in the back of your mind when you're back on the field. For the cheese. A for the cheese. <laughs> All right, don't forget to ask us your questions in the chat. Put everything in there and we'll get to you. So we're liking all the banter right now. Keep it coming. She said it. <laughs> Let's see. Um, should we go through and I was going to say, here's a, I got a, one I chotted down from Wit D earlier. Wit D asked us about the transformation of the defense. Was it having more time together as a team? The insertion of Reed? I mean, 267 shutout minutes is amazing. What do you all think? Sarah. Sarah, you want to take this one? This <laughs> defense? Think defender on the team? Yeah. Um, I <laughs> think that. I mean, a lot has changed, and we kind of spoke about this before. I think that Reed has been, you know, come in and, and she's done her job, and I'm impressed. Um, it's crazy to think that, like, a year ago she wasn't playing soccer. You wouldn't That's even insane. guess that. Yeah. So I definitely think she's done her job. Um, I feel like the defense has been more compact. I feel like the team overall uh, front to back has been more compact, and they haven't, you know, the defense hasn't been opened up as much, which has been great and, I, and led to less chances on goal, I think. Um, but overall, I mean, 267 minutes of a shutout from where we were a month ago is incredible. Pretty amazing. Yeah. You know, I, I got a private message also from our friend Sarah, and she asked, who do you think will be ACFC's biggest challenge? Is it San Diego? I think so. I think that rivalry is going to be huge. I think, I know in, in Mexico, the rivalry was always America Chivas. So I think this is going to be like the new rivalry here in, in California. And I think... Yes, you guys are LA and San Diego so far, but I feel like that that pride is there, that California pride, and then it's going to be a great competition. Yeah, it's definitely going to be the rivalry. I mean, it's Press and Alex Morgan, two hours yeah. apart, two mm -hmm. big cities in Southern California, two expansion, two expansion teams. teams. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, what about Gotham, though? We can't sleep on this East West rivalry. And I mean, Freya, Daniel Ball, and Heritage all came from Gotham. Do you think they have like kind of a score to settle with us taking all their? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so mid. How I feel about Gotham is after they lost like three to zero or something to someone a few weeks ago on all. The, yeah, I was just like, you know what, Gotham, we'll talk to you in a few weeks when you turn things around. <laughs> well, we will see on Sunday. Connor wants to know where should fan expectations be for this season? Are we an expansion team that can go all the way, or should we be a little less optimistic? I. I think we, let's be optimistic. Let's let's you know. I'm I'm in that mindset where let's think positive. You guys have Angel City has amazing players. You could already see the chemistry on the field. We're gonna go all the way. That's my take. <laughs> I like it. I want to go all the way, and I want to be able to say that. I think it's still so early, and the conservative side of me is 
a little nervous, but this team and the way we're playing right now, the chemistry we have, and the fact that I think we are just going to get better from here, I think we could see a star on our jersey next year. Well, I think that it's important to think like an expansion team has never made the playoffs in their first yeah. season. So it's obviously a big mountain to climb, but as like a veteran who's been in this league, you don't look at it like, oh, we're going to make the final right now. You know, I know like coaches like to set goals at the beginning of the season, but like as a vet, you're like, it's one game at a time. Like what can we do in these five days of practice to be better for this game this weekend? And I think that's kind of how you find the most success. Yeah, Jay Anthony 21 in the chat is saying that our depth is building every week too. And I, I definitely agree with that. I think we're trying new players in new positions and we're seeing a lot more ability from our players, you know, people playing out of their natural position being just the smallest piece of that. So absolutely, I think anything can happen. I think this could be our season to take. So one fun one from our producer, Jason, he wants to know if you guys could only eat one cuisine for the rest of your life, what are you eating? Who? Ooh, great question. Do you want to? I mean, <laughs> my favorite food is Chinese food, so I would okay. probably just go with that because it makes me happy inside. Um, I would say pasta, just because girls got to eat cut some carbs. You know? Yeah, <laughs> um, gives you energy. So I, I'm a huge Italian person, so pasta. Say with Italian though, you also get like the salads, the you bread. get the fish, you get the everything. So yeah. man, maybe I'm changing. <laughs> well, my favorite food is the cheeseburger, but. Um, don't tell anyone. I'm, I have high cholesterol, so I can't eat cheeseburgers. <laughs> don't tell anyone. She says don't on the live show. <laughs> don't tell anyone, guys. Oh this is a secret. <laughs> you don't eat cheeseburgers. Keep it here in this close knit family we've created. <laughs> yeah, don't tell anyone. Wait. So, okay, we get this question often, but I do always like to ask everyone um, on the panel, where would you like to see future expansion teams? I always have the same answer, but I want to know what you. Would. <laughs> I mean, I think we always hear like a NorCal thing, but I saw something recently and I started really thinking that Atlanta. Yes. Well, because so there is that um, conversation that Grant Wall um, shared the other week about a lot of the MLS clubs that are looking to also bring in expansion teams. So of those, I think it was Austin, um, Atlanta, mm -hmm. I think some was it Vancouver Nashville? possibly. Yeah, but so I guess let's now mix it up because we get asked this question weekly of some of those MLS expansion cities. Where would you want to see an NWSL team? That's a great question. I stick with Atlanta. I think the fan base down there has been really incredible, and I think they could jump to support a women's team down there. So I'd love to see that. And then we could also go to Atlanta. I want a Miami <laughs> team because I Ooh. love Miami, and I want to. What do you want to go play? <laughs> she just wants to go. Anyway. I'm going to go once a year for an away game. Okay. The question isn't where would you like to travel to yeah. next. It's where, where does Sarah want to go live? <laughs> oh, God. So like Sarah's leaving Los Angeles. We're never getting rid of her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're not, you're not leaving. <laughs> yeah. Not. Well, Lauren said Atlanta, too, because last time Lauren said it was one of her favorite places to play. So Ooh. that is always a good question. There we go. Don't tell anyone. Literally <laughs> tell <laughs> them. So someone said New Orleans. Um, okay. Mm. That'd be fun. That would be fun. I mean, the thing with NWSL teams also is, like, you don't need as big of a stadium. It kind of sucks to say, but a lot of our teams are playing in some of the smaller college stadiums. You know, we saw teams are practicing at high school fields. So, really, the possibilities are kind of endless. I just want a major airport right there so I can fly right in. And then I do like this one about Vegas. Vegas is up and coming, so, so smart. you never know. It's a quick flight. But it's hot, though. It's dangerous. Yeah. So <laughs> hot. It's a great city. Though. I mean, Vegas has held a lot of soccer tournaments, like, oh, on the, like, rec yes. level. That's a place to go for a weekend sevens or fives, you know. Yeah. Just jumping out there, quick flight out. Well, thank you all for your questions. We love interacting with you. So we're running out of show, but let's get to stoppage time. Jen, you're up first. What's on your mind and heart today? What's on my mind? Well, a lot of things on my mind, but no. Um, <laughs> my stoppage time is when the NWSL player is heading to the Mexican League. Um, I think it's such a great thing. I think it's quickly making the development you know, that much better for the league in Mexico, but also the NWSL players, you know, going there and then returning back to the NWSL. I mean, we see Sarah Lubert, she was at actually Chicago Red Stars her rookie year, um, and then headed to Club America, did it really well, killed it, came back, has so much more confidence, and same with Maria Sanchez. Um, Houston Dash, uh, she went to Tigres, won a championship, came back to the NWSL, is killing it. And I just think it really is beautiful to see the NWSL players come into the Mexican League with that NWSL style, that flavor, mixed in with how you know the Mexican League plays. And also, 
I like how some of the NWSL players are taking that Mexican league, you know, skill and that touch back to the NWSL. And it's just so cool to see the league grow and have that combination of NWSL and the Mexican league. I just think it's beautiful. What would you say defines that play style? What is the change that you're seeing? I think in the NWSL, it's very much, you know, obviously the, the touch is there, athleticism. It's one of the top, you know, places to play. I would say I think everyone's dream in Mexico, or my dream was to play in the NWSL. You know, you're playing with the best players like in the country. Um, I would say in the Mexican league, it's more, you know, laid back, a little reserved, a little touch and go here and there, um, tiki taka. Um, but yeah, I think those, those are the biggest differences. Interesting. So last week someone asked, or how, we would all feel or would we all want to see like a nation's league champions league type style tournament between the nwsl and um, the mexican league would you come out of retirement if that happened Ooh. <gasps> oh my god what i'm on the hot there? seat <laughs> what what said, on the field? i would maybe i would maybe come out of retirement <laughs> it's not Don't a play. no <laughs> there's no maybe sarah <gasps> just me <laughs> <laughs> A little one v one action. Yes. Eleven v one. <laughs> um, that'd be a, first off. That I think that'd be such a great idea to have that tournament because I feel like we have a lot of fans here in the mm -hmm. U.S. and I mean even in Mexico, there's a lot of NWSL fans. Mm -hmm. So that'd be really beautiful to watch. But okay. we'll see. She might come out of retirement. <laughs> Nina. <laughs> All right, we have something special that happened this week. We have a new collective bargaining agreement. Yes. And for my stoppage time, this is what I'm going to talk to you about, equal pay. I am so excited to be able to really share and highlight the fact that after decades, we are finally seeing that the U.S. men's national team and the U.S. women's national team are going to be receiving equal pay for their winnings. So all that pool money for the World Cup and any other championship games they play in and all commercial revenue are going to be split evenly between the men and the women. And this is a huge milestone and I'm so excited about it. So that's me. I'm <laughs> just tossing it up for I women. Honestly, it's about time. It is oh, about yeah, time. It's about time. And I will say that quote from Midge was true. Like, you know, it's kind of the bare minimum. Like, we're not giving out gold stars for doing what you should have been doing this whole time. But it is, like, it's to be celebrated and also, like, bare minimum. One of the things I really loved about all of it was the fact that every player who's fought for this, you know, they're giving credit to the women before them. And no one's like, well, what about me? You know, it's so late. I missed out on this. Everyone is like, I'm glad to be the stepping stone for women to advance more. Mm -hmm. And that's what I, I really that. appreciate. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. It was so historic too. I mean, I think this really opens the doors for other countries too. And it's going to be exciting to see what other countries step up to the plate. Yeah. Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to get into that one. So yeah. but tell us more, Jen. Sarah, what's your stoppage time? So, <laughs> oh, yes. My stoppage time is a little bit more is. surface <laughs> level and not as exciting <laughs> as Nina's. I don't know. Take your stand. <laughs> so everybody, you may have or you may have not heard of the bubble braid. It is the braid of the season. All the girls are doing it. I'm not even kidding. There's lots of girls Everyone. doing it. Um, a, cue up a picture so they can see the bubble braid. <laughs> this is important so stuff. I wore the bubble braid in 2021 for, I would say, about probably half the games of the season. It was my thing. I was doing it. I did not create it. I was not the first to do it, but I was the first to do it in the NWSL. You okay. see that braid? Nobody was doing it. There we it. go. Look at that bubble braid right there. <laughs> And I was feeling myself. And then I came this season, got traded here, and uh, I tore my ACL. And everyone swooped in and took the bubble braid. And it's fine, everyone looks mm. great, but I just want you to remember, you you're standing on the shoulders of Sarah Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> the OG I bubble like braid. The, the mom OG of the bubble braid. The bubble braid. <laughs> so yeah. She just, ha amazing. that was really heavy on her heart it for a couple it weeks, yeah. actually. It's been so weighing on me. Thank you for mentioning, <laughs> this is a safe space. Set the record straight that she is the OG. <laughs> it's important. Oh yeah, oh, yes. next week we will all wear our hair in bubble braids in support of you. It'll, is that Sarah did it first. Okay. Can you we'll do have my like hair? pins that we'll put in our hair that say Sarah did it okay. first. I approve, Sarah approves. <laughs> It was time it was time to set the record straight. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that both Angels Wear Boots and LAFC 360 are available as audio podcasts as well. Just search 110 Football on your app of choice, simple. And we are not done on the 110 Football channel this week. We have a lot going on. On Wednesday, it's a big one. LAFC head out to Carson to take on the Galaxy in the US Open Cup round of 16. Vince LaRosa and Connor Colopsis will bring you another watch party. Those are always so much fun. Then on Saturday, the black and gold are back at the bank, and so are we. 
Vince will be joined by our own Jessica Black and the defenders of the bank, Philly and Scarf. Tune in or go hang out with our crew just outside of LAFC HQ. All right, that's it for today's episode. Ladies, thanks for joining and hanging out. Don't forget who started the bubble braid. Yeah. I might do it next week. Just <laughs> I, so I, give I might be Sarah some I'll be like, that's my braid. Or Connor, maybe I'll like it. Connor is saying, who stole the bubble braid look? Drop some names. Ooh. We'll cancel them. You've got some support. It's live. <laughs> some of them are like her teammates. That's really awkward. <laughs> it really doesn't matter. Sub them out. Sub no. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you next yeah. week. Follow 110 Football and subscribe to this channel.